You refer to illness as a toxicity crisis. That's a very interesting term. Mm. Could you talk about that? Yes. Uh, it's basically when the body doesn't have the ability to remove toxins. Mm -hmm. And that will force the body to accumulate them. And toxins are things that you, you there's a very wide range of things you can pack into that. Mm -hmm. But toxins could be anything uh, that stays in the body too long. Okay. Even the body's own metabolic waste products. Mm -hmm. You call them waste products like uric acid, urea, mm -hmm. ammonia, oxalic acid. Um, these are potentially very damaging and they can act as toxins if they are not removed. All right. So ammonia, very caustic, can be very damaging to the cells if they are hanging around them too long. Mm -hmm. So that becomes a toxin. Now cells that are broken down, you break down 30 billion cells, you break them down into their basic particles, proteins. Mm -hmm. Now proteins can be very damaging, they're indicated um, as causing many illnesses, they're called viruses. All right. So a virus is basically a protein particle that can move in and out of cells. Um, viruses don't have a body like a, mm -hmm. a bacteria th that can reproduce itself. So it is simply innate proteins and the body uh, uses them as solvents. They use them as solvents to dissolve. Mm -hmm. uh, viruses are solvents to dissolve chemicals and harmful material that bacteria could not dispose viruses of. Are viruses are viruses. Um, bacteria go after organic things like mm -hmm. dead or damaged cells. They will infect them when mm -hmm. they're damaged, which is important because otherwise these cells can become cancer cells. So bacteria help to prevent mm -hmm. cancers. That's why many people who have an infection uh, they, and they have a cancer, uh, they may get rid of the cancer with the infection. Oh. So many people, there, people who have had colds or severe flu and they had cancer and then the flu, dis the cancer disappeared after they had the flu. All right. Or chickenpox uh, infection. Mm -hmm. It has many times shown that cancers disappear after you have chickenpox. So again, uh, once you, you flood the body and multiply certain um, viruses, then the body can get rid of disease. So viruses are not causing disease. They are solvents to dissolve things that the bacteria cannot uh, dissolve or break down. And uh, fungi go after completely mm -hmm. dead matter, okay. completely dead cells. So the toxicity crisis is a way of the body eliminating, because it's gotten to be just too much. Yes, the tox when the toxins arise to a certain point, you need either bacteria, fungi, or viruses. Okay. So th these are the helpers when the body can no longer deal with it, when the immune system is incapable of getting rid of all the toxins. Mm -hmm. And there can be toxins from the food, pesticides, okay. very common. Um, there can be drugs, mm -hmm. uh, inhaled you know, pollution from the air, metals, mm -hmm. heavy metals. Um, if you, uh, most common breakfast foods, they have uh, fortified iron in it, which is a real toxin. Oh. Fortified iron. You'd, you'd make an experiment, took, uh, take some cornflakes, put it in a bowl uh, of water, let them float around, take a magnet from your refrigerator door and uh, hold them over it and, and then you, you basically can move the cornflakes around the water. Mm -hmm. And then you take the cornflakes, put it in the blender you know, with uh -huh. water, put it in a plastic bag, you're transparent, and put the magnet in there, and then shake it around, mm -hmm. and then look at the magnet. It has iron filings in it. It's completely black. So it is all iron. It's all in the food. They, they just pack um, heavy metals into the oh, food okay. so they can say fortified iron, which is supposed to be good for you, but it makes you sick. That's just it damages the it damages the liver and it damages the uh, the the spleen mm -hmm. and people get enlarged spleens and it damages the stomach so you can get actually stomach ulcers from that so again uh, you know, there are a lot of toxins in right. that respect in the food MSG mm -hmm. um, which oh, yeah. has many names mm -hmm. nowadays um, foods that are not really uh, useful for us soy uh, food okay. which you know, is a, uh, has anti nutrients in them. Uh, certain foods that are not meant for humans, they were meant for animals. Not everything that grows on the planet is you know, okay. edible for humans. Okay. So we, we came here after the animals. Mm -hmm. The animals were here first. So most foods were made for animals, not for humans. So if there are certain foods that have anti-nutrients and 
because there are animals that can neutralize those mm -hmm. uh, nutrients and they can digest them, but we cannot. Uh, soy can only be digested if you ferment it, like the Japanese oh, do, yes, yes. five, six years, and then it's okay. Um, so then uh, there are you know, other food you know, additives, you mm -hmm. know, preservatives, any time you preserve on, a food, then uh, you basically make it undigestible, indigestible. Which leads the, to a toxicity crisis. Yeah, like margarine, you can put bacteria on it, mm -hmm. nothing happens to it. It cannot be digested by, by, by bacteria. If it cannot be digested by bacteria, <laughs> humans cannot digest it either. Take a hamburger nowadays. Mm -hmm. You can leave it in an open space for months on end or for years and it will still look the same. French fries, you can you put them there and leave them there. They will not de deteriorate. If you make fresh ones, really from potatoes, and you cut them, they will be moldy after mm -hmm. a short while. So if, if food doesn't become moldy, mm -hmm. it pr produces poisons. It is toxic for the body. You cannot eliminate it. It has to accumulate in the body. Okay, and that would lead to... And that to will lead to a crisis eventually mm -hmm. where the toxins reach a certain level mm -hmm. of saturation where suddenly the body has, uh, you know, develops a, an, you know, a, a response to break down the toxins, which always involves inflammation. Right. Inflammation is a healing response, not mm. a disease. Every disease that we now say is a disease is an inflammation. All right. And if you stop the body from having the inflammation or the infection, you are preventing the body from building, you know, removing the mountain of toxins that led up to mm. it. And it, by allowing the body to do that, you diminish that mountain. And then you actually, the toxicity crisis ends, just like any viral infection comes and goes. When there's nothing for the viruses to do anymore, then they will disappear, or they will go to, to a level where they are you know, no longer producing antibodies. So you are, um, you know, you are perfectly equipped to deal mm -hmm. with that by allowing the body to release the toxins by cleaning out the liver, the colon and the kidneys, the major organs of elimination, and then have a, a good nourishment, good sunshine, good amount of water to help and sleep, uh, to have all the factors responsible for keeping the human body healthy, which mm -hmm. it has mm -hmm. for a long, long time. And now we have so many chronic illnesses out of, uh, you know, compared to 100 years ago, it's 90% of illnesses are chronic now. Uh, at least 60% you know, of the American population is now ill with a chronic illness mm -hmm. or some kind of you know, illness that doesn't seem to go away. And uh, it used to be 10% of the people, um, you know, only, uh, so, sorry, only 10% of all illnesses were chronic, were chronic oh, okay. about 100 years ago. And now it's 90% of all illnesses are chronic. So that really shows where, mm -hmm. where it's coming from.